uh, Joseph Dennis House. Uh, that's what it has been named. And uh, it's one of the uh, most significant wood frame houses in Cumberland County. And that's according to Joan Berkey, whose uh, book on the wood frame houses of Cumberland County features this house among others. And, um, and she's actually told us that it's her favorite house in, 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 in Cumberland County. Uh, so um, she came here at a time when it was being uh, restored. Uh, and the restoration was done by um, Steve Barnt uh, and his wife Kathy. Um, they bought the house from... Uh, uh, I, I believe it came through the Ewing family. From the Ewing family, right. Who had had it for about a hundred years, I think, before. Uh, before. Uh, it, there was major work that needed to be done in this house, and Steve did a lot of it himself, and but had some local help uh, in doing uh, the bigger jobs. Significant but thing. This is the oldest part of the house uh, that you're in. This and the floor above, and there was a lean-to uh, shed kitchen uh, on the other side of this wall, and that's the original one and a half story house built in around 1690. Uh, I don't have an exact date, but around 1690 uh, by Michael Izard. Probably Michael Izard yeah. lived here. Uh, this was actually uh, John. Uh, F. Benwick had owned this property. He sold it to a John Clark, who sold it to a Michael Izzard. And at that time, because of the the low uh, the low amount of money he had to buy uh, for the prop purchase of the property, there was probably not a house on it at that time. And that was like 1688. But the next time we find Michael Izzard, he has moved from Chester County in Pennsylvania over to here and and is known as to as a person from Greenwich. So evidently he was living here at that time. He had a wife Mary and a son, Michael Izzard Jr., who built a house uh, down in Cape May County. And if you look at the inside of that house, it has some of the same features that this house has, even though it's much larger. And I guess he took what he learned or he knew about this house and just brought it down, down into Keaton County. So that's about that. With the original plot of land was 16 acres. This, the town was divided up into 16 acre plots. I think it was called a manor town. I think that was the uh, way they divided it up. And so this was a house on one of those original 16 acre plots, which I understand went down to Market Lane. Um, extended that far down and uh, I'm not sure how far back it went. We know um, there was the Dennis family that lived here for some time beginning in around probably 1710 or 1720 mm -hmm. uh, and um, they were a family um, that had several houses in the area. Philip Dennis had a house out on the other side of Tyndall Island Road, Tyndall Island Road. Uh, and then um, and Joseph Dennis is, I, I, did he die? And then Joseph Dennis lived in this house. His brother Philip lived here, and he had another brother also that lived in, what, what I would say, in town, in, the, in local, in the area. And I just know this because of looking at the wills. Elizabeth Dennis, who was Joseph and Philip Dennis' sister, lived in this house. And it, but at one time, Philip Dennis supported her, and money was given to her. And then, evidently, when Joseph died, or before he died, she moved into this house, and and but was still supported by her brothers. Now, uh, at, when, when in her will in 1782, she leaves a she leaves the house to her cousin Prudence Dennis, but also leaves a bed to a a slave. Uh, his name is Samson, and he was owned by someone in, I believe, uh, Cape May, down in Cape May, down in maybe in Venice, in Cape May. But she left a bed, her bed, for him. And I just think that is just so touching, that um, at, at, the, at that particular time, that that, that happened. And it, I think it shows you, like, so many people come in here and they just love being here. And this house has been loved by a lot of people, a lot of good people who helped People. And I think it really, it really tells in in living in the house itself. 
So, uh, so that was a story about Elizabeth. Then her, her cousin Prudence did live in this house, and she stayed here for a while till it be, became, um, I think, uh, Priscilla, the Harding House, right down the street here. There were two sisters. One lived in this house here, and one lived over here. And then there was a, uh, a tower, and then his son had a post office here. And that post office was situated right where that driveway is now. And now that post office is in Smithville. Right. So this is, um, this, and I mentioned before, this in the room above, and the shed kitchen, now made into a room, um, would be the original house. And um, this summer bean up here, uh, is, uh, Joan says, one of the largest in this area, uh, and it's, um, I measured it yesterday, and it's uh, seven and a half by 17, 17 and inches, 17 and a half inches, 17 and, a half. and um, when, uh, when the Varnes bought this house 20 years ago, uh, there was a lot of termite damage in the wood uh, in this room and um, not so much above it, but in this room in particular. And so you can see the new uh, beams that have been put in. All the original work was hand-hewn, as was happened with most houses at that time. Um, and Steve and a couple of co-workers did a lot of handwork, but it's not all hand-hewn. It's milled in, in uh, some ways, some rough ways. Uh, and so um, it's a typical construction for a house from that time, influenced by houses that had been built in Massachusetts, Connecticut, and Long Island, because those are the people who, uh, um, among others, uh, were people who settled here uh, first. Land was cheaper down here, and so they came and bought land down here. Most of what you see here is original, except for the supporting beams, uh, which all, right. all have been replaced except for that post. In order to do that, Steve uh, and his uh, fellow workers actually took the wall off that side of the house, the exterior wall, and this side of the house laid them down on the ground. They Flat. encased <laughs> them in, in uh, plywood, I think it was plywood, and uh, laid them down on the ground so they could remove all of the termite damaged wood in here. And then, uh, after that was all done, put the walls back up again. Now, originally, these walls would not have been plastered. They were just the, um, the exterior uh, wood would have been the interior wood. It, it was nothing, no insulation or anything like that. It could have been pretty chilly. Okay. And the floors have been replaced here. Uh, a lot of the floors have been replaced through the house. And it's just interesting that the wood for uh, the next room, I think it is, comes from, and here too, comes from um, the Campbell Soup Factory in Camden. Mm -hmm. And so it's got these holes in it that they would bring electric through to run machinery. So you can see little holes through um, throughout the wood here. There's a trap door that goes underneath. There was originally a double fireplace. Uh, in this location. There's still the one on the other side, but uh, there is uh, the one on this side was blocked up, and actually the one on the other side was made a little smaller, too. It was a huge cooking fireplace uh, originally, and so they made it a little smaller. And as I mentioned, that was a shed kitchen, uh, this room, uh, and it um, is uh, now 1820 or so, 1820, 1830. It was changed into another room that ha in the house, and the shed kitchen was added. Another shed kitchen was added on the back. At about the same time, or just a few years later, another room was added on the other side of this middle room. Uh, it goes up two steps, and you go into what's called the silk room or the cocoon room, because it was part of a kind of a commercial craze at the time to raise silkworms and developed the silk industry here, and that room was intended to house the cocoons for the, uh, for the silk, uh, silkworm industry. But really what they found out was that um, uh, small-scale uh, silk re uh, development doesn't work, and it had to be done on a much larger scale. There was a lot of manual work involved in it, and so doing it at one house at a time just you know, 
apparently that's the reason why it failed here. So that's the room on the other side. That was built and there was a basement built underneath it at the same time. And Around 1820 to 1830. And then in the back of the house is the now kitchen of the house, which originally was built on as a shed kitchen. And you can see the, the roof and the ceiling when you go, go out there, it comes down on a pitch. And that's still the kitchen of the house. And then I'm not sure when the other room was added on in the back. Do you know, have any idea about no, that? No, there's an, like what they consider an all-purpose room, which I, it's my art room right now, and a bathroom. But in the kitchen itself, you'll see two large iron doors that uh, was the fireplace, the cooking kitchen. That was where they cooked back well, out in there. Yeah. This room, uh, um, this uh, painting up here is done by Joan Brown. Uh, so mm -hmm. she did that. That's a view of Greenwich that she took from a... Um, an etching. That's an etching, it. right. And uh, from about 1820, 1810 to 1820. So it would have been just about the time that the additions were being put on, on this house. Upstairs there is, uh, in 1820. In the bedroom that we sleep in, the original bedroom, there is a, a gun stock post at, at the uh, corner of the bedroom, you can see. And it's really a nice size bedroom for that time, so I'm sure they used it a lot more than just for a bedroom. Also at the top of the stairs, when you go up the stairs, oh, yeah. there is a smoking closet uh, where they used to smoke meats. It's, it has a... Uh, the brick wall from the fireplace is common to that closet up there. So we learned from Gracie Thompson that they would take bricks out of the uh, chimney wall so the smoke would come into that closet and smoke meats. So that, that's just really interesting. And then when you go up, you can see how tall the shed kitchen was here, the original shed kitchen, because the post there is, I guess, a beam. It was cut in order to make additional room for a bedroom.